Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul Workman. I am the man of constant hatred, and welcome to Drinking Age Movies Short, a show where we take a short look back at films that were released 21 years ago and discuss their impact on filmmaking and pop culture today. Today we're saying happy 21st birthday to Holy Man, a film that was released on October 9th, 1998. And that, as much as anything else, led to my drinking problem. The time was always going to come when I was stuck with a film that wasn't well-remembered, well-regarded, or well... really any good. Holy Man is a film starring Eddie Murphy. Do you remember Eddie Murphy from when we talked about him playing a dragon? A guardian dragon named Mushu, voiced by Eddie Murphy. Finds out you're a girl. The penalty is death. Well, now he's back as a spiritual guru who has been tapped by a shopping network producer to hawk products on television. If you weren't aware, however, Eddie Murphy had a production company named Eddie Murphy Productions. That is a name for a production company. 1983, after the massive success of 48 Hours and Trading Places, Paramount had the business sense to sign Murphy to a five-film contract. This contract also included a clause for the newly formed Eddie Murphy Productions to develop films for the company that may not include Murphy as their star. Big shock, they all do. Murphy proved this deal to be quite fruitful, churning out hits for the studio such as Coming to America and the Beverly Hills Cop trilogy the first of which was the highest grossing R-rated film until 2004's The Passion of the Christ. This less recognizable face is Tom Schulman. Schulman wrote Holy Man. He started in the industry by writing a couple of TV movies, and then having a breakout year in 1989 with three screen credits. In June, he co-wrote the Rick Moranis classic Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, which was directed by Joe Johnston, who also directed The Rocketeer and Captain America First Avenger. He had a co-writing credit on the Joel Zwick-directed comedy sci-fi film Second Sight, starring John Larroquette and Bronson Pinchot in November. He also wrote and won an Academy Award for Dead Poets Society. Wait. Okay. Okay. One of these things just doesn't belong here. Dead Poet Society and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids both made over $200 million, and Second Sight flopped so badly that this is the first time anyone has talked about it in 30 years. I was talking about it last week. That being what it is, Schulman was in demand and sold three more scripts in the early 90s. 1991's What About Bob, a modest hit, 1992's Medicine Man, which barely made its money back, and Holy Man, bought in 1993 and was set to star John Candy as the main character G. Obviously that didn't happen because the lovable big man died March 4th, 1994, effectively throwing this script into development hell for the next four years. Enter Eddie Murphy Productions. Fresh off of the 1995 Wes Craven directed horror comedy Vampire in Brooklyn and free from the contract with Paramount, they picked up the script, they took it to Disney, and brought on director Stephen Herrick, a man who had some major hits on his hands. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Be excellent to each other. <laughs> Party on, dudes! The Mighty Ducks. <laughs> Mr. Holland's Opus, and the film he did right before this, a live action remake of 101 Dalmatians, which made. $320 million?! Why did Disney decide to wait on all these cash grab remakes? Eh, I guess that was a much more exciting grab than the guy who directed the 1997 Tom Schulman pin flop Eight Heads in a Duffel Bag. Who was... Tom Schulman. This man has an Oscar. As per an earlier paragraph, they cast Eddie Murphy as the lead. Or at least the eponymous holy man. Modern thirst trap Jeff Goldblum lands the story lead, Ricky, a shopping network producer who is spiritually bankrupt and only lives for profit and to please his boss, played by Robert Loja. Whoa, Robert Loja! So, bankable star, Oscar-winning writer, 
a director who has just had a massive hit for the production company of the film, makes sense why you would throw $60 million at this project. Too bad it only managed to make $12 million at the box office. Stephen Herrick would follow this film up with three more massive flops, Rockstar, Life or Something Like It, and Man of the House. He would move on to made-for-TV movies, straight-to-video movies, and television shows, where he is now an executive producer on the new MacGyver series, which is currently set to run through 2020. Tom Schulman was no longer a trusted name in Hollywood. He created a television series named The Court, a primetime drama about the Supreme Court, in 2002. It aired on ABC in March as a mid-season replacement. Despite a stunning cast, including Sally Field, Christina Hendricks, and Robert Loggia, Oh, Robert Loja. It was cancelled after only three episodes. It also featured Chris Sarandon as a justice named Voorhees. Misplay on not changing that character's name to Humperdinck. Schulman's last big screen credit was the 2004 Gene Hackman Ray Romano flop, Welcome to Mooseport. He did co write a TV pilot for HBO called Anatomy of Hope, which J.J. Abrams was set to direct, but it wasn't picked up. Eddie Murphy Productions, after some very poor money management, would only produce the PJ's TV series after this. In 2002, it would close its doors and never be heard from again. Weirdly, that was the same year as The Adventures of Pluto Nash. Um, we'll stick a pin in this one. So that was Holy Man. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Are you hoping to get a can of G-Wiz? Leave a comment down below. Let us know all of that. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and hit that little bell icon. I think it's over here, then you can get notifications whenever we drop a new video. You can follow us on Facebook at Drinking Age Movies. You can follow me, the man of constant hatred, on Twitter and Instagram at Father of the Fear. You can give to our Patreon at patreon.com slash drinkingagemovies. You can follow our podcasts on Podbean, Stitcher, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts, because those are the places that we have them. And if we don't have them on where you listen to podcasts, please let us know down below, and we will get it on there just for you. That one person that listens to whatever. Probably cut that out. My name is Paul Workman. I am the man of constant hatred. And you have yourself a damn fine day. Father of the Fear. You, I lost eye contact because I suddenly doubted that I had a different hat on.